You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Ben Smith. And then I felt it so like dribble down the side of my face. I opened my eye and it got in it burned and oh hello and oh, welcome to Chewing the Cud. I'm again joined by the singing saxophonist extraordinaire that is Vern Smith. Hello, hi. Hi, love to be back. Good. I'm glad that you came back. We didn't <laughs> yes. have we didn't have to charge him or anything. <laughs> it's true. I will expect payment later. This week, I'm talking about a commemorative coin that looks slightly odd, and then we have our game to play in our game of the week. And that's before Ven shows exactly what a top pop banger needs in Teach Me a Lesson. On screen now, you can see all of our social media. Just search for at the Could TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. Going through customs. Mm. Yeah, I'm assuming you've been through customs before. I have been through customs before. Um, do you ever get the fear that they're going to stop you even if you've done nothing wrong? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm always really, especially when you have to walk through the the thingy, you know. The body scanner. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, am I done? Am I okay? Am I, you know, are you going to fill me up? <laughs> <laughs> and can you if I ask myself? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a me thing then. Okay. Um, what's the fun thing to do those body scanners is if you wear, shall we say, an intimate item of ring design mm. out of silicone. It doesn't set off the things, but it go shows up on a body scanner. So, I'm sorry, you have to explain that further. What's that? And a cock ring. <laughs> <laughs> <What's that? laughs> right. Well, it's, it's, it's a, a small silicone or rubber thing, right, that you put around your, your penis and testicle shaft to make things more enjoyable. Can you show me? <laughs> no. I mean, I can show you a picture, but it won't be mine. Um, um, but yeah, body scanner, they show up and they mm. automatically say, can you come this way, please, sir? And they then do feel you up, from what I've heard. <laughs> Speaking from many years' experience and not even getting on a flight. Um, well, this is a story about a gentleman called Calvin Bassouz, mm -hmm. a great name, who basically was asked whether he was smuggling anything in his pants mm. because they saw the shape of his python, shall we say. Right. Okay. Um, it was actually three pythons he was smuggling. Um, it wasn't his penis. It was actually three snakes. Right. Um, he was going from Montreal to New York. Um, and he decided, I'm going to smuggle these two and a half thousand pound snake things down his, his trousers. Awake? Uh, Awake. Mm. Wiggly. R wriggling around. Wiggly. Well, Snakes in the Plane. That was a film. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um, Real life. Yeah. Two and a half thousand pounds per snake. And he thought the best way of getting them into the country was in his pants. I mean... I mean, I feel like you wouldn't need to go through the scanner to see that, that something's going on downstairs. <laughs> I was <gonna> say, <laughs> or, I don't know, maybe he's like, oh, well, okay. He's having a, he's having a great day. <laughs> was he wearing grey sweatpants? We'll never know. Um, this is the question. But it's, that, it's, that, it, it's three, that's a lot to be smuggling in your pants. That is a lot to be, I mean, smuggling anything in your pants, you know, that's brave. Mm -hmm. This feels very brave. <laughs> Borderline stupidity. But, or stupid, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, yeah. well, you know, I wonder. I wonder what they, they see at customs. They must see some interesting things, but this is probably a more interesting day yeah, yeah. on the job. <laughs> so, someone get, thinking, my luck's in here. <laughs> he needs a pat down while I look at that. Oh, it's snakes. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if they escaped in the airport. Still there. No, no, they, they were caught as they were getting in. They were taken quarantine and put away. Yeah, um, he was then sentenced to five years in, in well, sorry, three years in prison and a $5,000 fine. Oh, wow. For smuggling snakes. Well, hey, you don't do that again. <laughs> so if you are going to smuggle snakes, not down your pants. That's mm. my first tip. Um, and the second tip, don't smuggle, smuggle snakes. That's hard to say that. <laughs> smuggle snakes. Smuggling Snake snakes. smuggler. Yeah. <laughs> now that I have been caught. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on quite quickly from, from nicknames. Um, drugs. Uh, We're not smuggling them. Um, drugs, yeah. Offering or talking? <laughs> talking about, not offering. Um, unless you want to paracetamol. Um, I could do you a, a line of ibuprofen if you've got time. Wow. Um, it's a story about a priest who has been arrested for selling drugs. Okay. Okay. Right. Specifically, two types of drugs. Mm. One, Viagra, mm -hmm. right, and the other, MDMA. Okay. Yeah, sliding scale of... <laughs> sliding scale of... <laughs> um, him and his 
friend whom he lived with mm -hmm. were both arrested. So it's like, we're not saying that he was the lover, but a friend that he okay. lived with, because um, he's a Catholic priest, yeah. um, was basically selling, was selling uh, Viagra illegally okay. out of his um, home, mm -hmm. which is attached to the church, via people knocking on and via post. Oh, wow. Okay. So people would text him saying, can you send me a Viagra? And he would send it through the post. Okay. So, you know, there's like, there's levels of this business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> He's thought about it. There's, you know, um, when they went in and they went, okay, you're selling Viagra. And they're like going, oh, and you've also got two and a half kilos of, coke, of um, MDMA here. That's mm. less Viagra. -y. A bit more. <laughs> That's less Viagra. -y. Uh, did you ever watch um, White Lotus? I've not watched White Lotus. There's uh, a, a scene in that, or a, yeah, in the in the program, where Viagra and MDMA are mixed up to catastrophic... <laughs> mixed up as in in a pot, or mixed up as in... I no, as in like them. somebody thought they were taking Viagra, but then they were given MDMA instead. So, you know, Very different didn't tablet. end well. I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, they had a nice time, I guess. <laughs> Just a different experience from what they were expecting. So, you know, all, all I'm saying, <laughs> if I was to offer this priest some advice, just be careful about labelling. I mean, Viagra is a different shape to MDMA, from what I understand. <laughs> um, yes. I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you lead on from that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you know the difference between tablets and powders, um, at the Kud TV on social media. And now we go over to our story of the week. Now, are you a driver? I am a driver. No, okay. no car. No car. I can. Okay. What's your most irritating traffic cause? Uh, irritating traffic cause. Yeah. So you're stu stuck in traffic. Yeah. You find out oh, why right. the traffic cause is there, the traffic. Yeah. and it's like going. That's the one that irritates me the most. Mm. So for me, it's accidents. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess so. That or like roadworks, probably. You know, something that's really just diverts you in some ridiculous route um, that you can't get around. Yeah, road, um, roadworks I'm okay with because they're trying to make the roads nicer. Mm. Well, allegedly. allegedly. Um, but then it's the people that have had accidents. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually not them, it's the people stopping to look at the oh, accidents. Oh, the, the rubber, uh, rubber uh, necking, is that what it's called? Yeah. Just uh, stopping to look. Like, and it's really slow, yeah. Like, stop looking, they're dead, move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> God. I'm a joy in traffic. <laughs> um, uh, well, okay, yeah, I'll avoid <laughs> driving with you. <laughs> Get a bit ragey now and again. Um, well, this is a story about people who were stuck in traffic mm -hmm. behind two camels oh. in London. Oh. Okay. Um, so there were basically wow. two people who were riding camels. One was riding a red um, pack and the other one was grey. Mm. All right. Um, so that's the, the other camel there. Yeah. Uh -huh. quite, see. Um, surrounded by people wearing masks and playing loud music. In East Ham. I was trying to figure out where it was. In East Ham. In East Ham, yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually down um, Newham High Street. Oh, okay, yeah. I've yeah. been down there. Well, not on a camel. Not on a camel? No. No. <laughs> Any other dromedaries? <laughs> Ooh, word. <laughs> that's, that's a good word. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, no. I wasn't offered such things. Have you been on the 147 bus? <laughs> yes, <it's> similar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because that's the one that was impacted. Um, mm. uh, and this came out because they, basically they, were, they had camels, they were moving. They had to move them down the high street, so that's why they had to walk. Um, but the, the interesting thing was that that bus behind them was filled with school kids. Mm. And the reason why a bus full of school kids were like, oh, we got stuck behind some camels, <laughs> didn't go over very well. Yeah, like, come on. Yeah, it's like, how are you all coming <laughs> up with the same lie? Right. And it was only like the day after when it was in the news that the, the teachers went. Then they were believed. Oh, that detention shouldn't have happened. <laughs> we've suspended all these. <laughs> it's like we've expelled all these children for, for truancy. Christmas has been cancelled. No more camels. Christmas we cancelled in March. <laughs> We're really planning on our, our punishments now. <laughs> All right, there was some link in my brain to the, the three kings and camels and Christmas. I don't know. No, I, I got it, but it was, just, it was a very, a very... Right, okay. Right, Easter, still going ahead. You can have your chocolate <laughs> eggs, right? But in nine months, you're going to be pissed off. But if they are now <laughs> stopped by a giant chicken, mm -hmm. then Easter might be cancelled. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what is I don't know what else is planned in Eastern <laughs> in terms of animals blocking buses. Rabbits. Is this a yearly event? Like, can I get tickets? What, <laughs> yeah, tickets to camels walking. <laughs> you just go to the zoo. Can I ride the camel? 
Um, so they d they do actually sell camel rides, which is why they were moving them from one place to another. Great. Um, and it, Where? Just um, in London. Okay. So, uh, oh, the camel rides, not actually. But, right, but like through London, like this is a new tourist. Oh no no, they they had um, they have like a travelling fair kind of idea. Okay. So they had camels, and they needed to move them from one location to another. It's very expensive to move things, so they just said they can walk, we can ride them. Well, hey, jobs are good. You know, yeah. It's what roads used to be for? Camels. camels. <laughs> <laughs> they did, just not necessarily in this country in London during yeah, the winter. Either. We should, we should change that. We should change that. I'd say, camel Ubers would now be a thing. That yeah, that should be a thing. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> in our area, we're getting a very slow taxi or an Uber, as it's yeah. also known. Have you ever got an Uber Possibly in London? Possibly faster. I mean, if they can stop traffic and get through <laughs> and make the news, I'd say worth spending money on. You could probably walk it down the, si the sidewalk. Because I work in an American company, mm. the pavement, mm -hmm. and not yeah. get pulled over. Quite possibly. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, there's some other things I've seen in that neck of the woods. Yeah. Who knows? And then imagine being rear-ended by a camel. But that's all from the buzz this week. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Camel-based news. I enjoyed that. It's okay. I have a pleasure as always. But coming after this short break, it's Fen and the showbiz news. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Ven and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Ven. So, showbiz news, uh, there is a brand new coin in town, um, hey. that's right, that has, are you into coins? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> you should be, <laughs> they are great. <laughs> why, are they, <laughs> why are they great? Because <laughs> they're round and they are money. Okay. I don't actually know if you can spend this one that I'm about to talk about, but okay. <laughs> I do have a friend who collects coins. Okay. So if you're one? watching Ant, this is specifically for you, I guess. <laughs> um, so there is a new coin unveiled by the Mint, which is a George Michael themed coin. I don't know if that's... Is it one of the snappy stuff. snaps? Uh, yeah, that's the picture that they've <laughs> used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are unhappy. To be honest, that might have been better than what is actually on the coin, as you can see here. I mean, what is what is your impression of this image of the coin? Um, it, it it looks like it. That. Well, yes. So the reason why I don't want to say his name. <laughs> his name is Robin Thicke. Uh -huh. Here uh, is there because some people have been saying that it does not look like George Michael, but in fact looks like Robin. I mean, I would say it kind of just. I mean, possibly. But it just isn't very good in general. No. It's um, got a hint towards George Michael there. Yeah, but it's not even just that. It's like the whole... Like, is the coin white itself? I, I just... I don't know. It just feels like a bad design overall, I'd yeah. say. I also, when I was looking at it before, I, I first thought that the bit behind mm -hmm. was maybe supposed to be... I was like, I don't really know what it's supposed to be. I thought it was maybe like a cityscape. Mm -hmm. But actually, I've now realised, I think it's a good neck of a guitar... And then those are supposed to be like sound waves. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I get you know, that now. He's a musician. He was a musician. <laughs> um, um, and, yeah, and it's supposed to be related to Faith, the song as well. So I guess oh. that, because that's... So it's like the waveform from Faith. Possibly. Oh, that's cool. And I guess like the earring, and that's what he was but wearing. I don't know, it just, no, it doesn't work for me. It's a bit of a miss. It is a bit of a miss. I mean, I'm more excited about, wow, well, did they get red onto a coin? Well, exactly. When did that start happening? And, and yeah, so my question is, I mean, I guess it's just a collector's item. I don't think you can go to the shop and be like, I would like a mop set me. <laughs> Why would you not want a mop head with a George Michael coin? Because <laughs> right? um, most of the, the coins that you can get, so um, it's like the Paddington Bear 50p's. Mm -hmm. They're actually 50p, so you can go out and spend them. Spendable. I mean, it costs you £5 to get one, mm -hmm. so why you do that, I wouldn't know, but it's, not. it's actually 50p. Um, but what, so what is this to... worth? That is the question. Maybe Don't it's... even know, it doesn't say in it. Maybe it's is a it a shame. pound? Is it 50p, 20p, 5p? The Royal Mint have just blurred the lines. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Robin Thicke is I mean, oh, Yeah, well, um, like that, it's, it's all just a bit unfortunate, isn't it? It's very unfortunate. Um, and who... The thing with all this stuff is... Surely it has to, it has to pass through quite a few people <laughs> before... It, 
They're like, yeah, we're ha- we're totally happy with this. Everybody has said yes. George Michael's, you know, like lots of people have got to approve it. Yeah, we're going to pass approve- through a few people. <laughs> it's your turn for the coin. <laughs> Not some water. Well, money is dirty. Dirty money. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they George spend Michael's it. Coin if is you literally can. shit. <laughs> All right, moving on. So our next story is all about RuPaul. Oh, lovely. Lovely RuPaul. So RuPaul has released a new memoir Mm -hmm. um, and in this has been quite open about addiction in the past and which I feel like he's maybe spoken about before but perhaps maybe this is a bit more detail about all of this in the memoir. And so it's kind of been picked up by the media a little bit and in particular sort of talking about buying a Coke from the sleaziest dealer Um, in the House of Hidden Meanings, which is the name of the the memoir. Um, So I think there, for me, I don't know, stories like this, when they come out, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I quite, I I do quite like them. I think think it can be, sometimes can be quite inspirational in terms of like overcoming stuff and then seeing people where they are now and that, you know, things aren't always rosy and... RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> Empire, uh-huh. you know, there was a journey to get to that point. Um, but long, I don't know, how long, do you feel? Long, long, a long, long, long journey. Long yeah. journey for RuPaul. Um, how do you feel about that, like in terms of celebrities, I guess, in particular, but kind of sharing stuff like that from their past? I think it's always good when people can share their stories, mm. um, especially about addiction and other things that they've been through because it kind of normalizes them a little bit. Because mm-hmm. when you see like, yeah, RuPaul and the glamorous house and yeah. their big, like, um, ranch that they've got and all that sort of success and fracking, huh? <laughs> fracking, fracking. Have you ever seen that? No. <laughs> that well, that gone over the head. That there's uh, um, who was it? Peppermint and Bob the drag queen were talking about RuPaul and mm-hmm. how he allegedly does fracking. Oh, okay. And there's a video of them going like this and laughing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so I mean, having been around for a lot of RuPaul's career, mm. right? back when RuPaul was Cupcake mm. um, and part of the Club Kids, because um, I remember watching them on Ronaldo. Um, that's how old I am. Um, I, I've seen their career come along a long way, mm. but I, you can definitely see in some of the earlier and some of the other clips that RuPaul had demons that they were fighting. Mm. Um, but I think it's good that they're sharing and saying, look, this is what I've had to overcome and, and that sort of thing. And their partner was also, um, uh, George's, was also on meth quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is kind of part of that, and in the the, the bit that I'd read from um, the story, kind of relates to that. How his partner was, I guess, in rehab at the time, but then RuPaul realised actually, oh, I'm going through some stuff as well, and then needed to kind of get support. Um, but yeah, I think like I think it's it's good to share that because it might be quite helpful. Yeah. And I think it just in general, it's the whole thing around celebrity and fame is that it's not, it's not overnight, right? Yeah. You know, it's all, everybody is starting from somewhere and, you know, quite often quite a lot of hard stuff before getting to the, to the glam point in Unless life. Unless you're a Kardashian. Unless you're a Kardashian, you know. Because, yeah. Um, how about yourself? When's your memoir coming out? The Exploits of an Uninteresting Man. Already has a title. Yes. Yeah. When, when's that um, coming out? Yeah. I can't wait. Um, probably in about 10 years mm. post-death. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we'll look forward to that. We're all looking forward to my death, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for that. Can't Moving on. <laughs> You're still alive now. That's a shame. All right. Uh, Go towards the light. <laughs> Go towards the light, mate. Yeah, all right. Moving on to somebody else who probably has a few memoirs and is there very much still with us. Um, and doing a stadium tour right now. Who am I talking about? Someone that's still with us and is doing a stadium tour. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, yeah, she's still there. Uh, But somebody, let's say, above uh, the pop ladder. Uh, We're talking about Madonna. Oh, she's not still alive. Yeah. She's been animatronic for years. I mean, to be fair, that picture does look quite like an AI animatronic. That's a robot in a Madonna skin suit. <laughs> but do people care? They're paying the money to see her. Stupidly paying the money to see her. Would you not? No. Mm. Well, it's a lot of money. It's like five hundred pounds for a ticket. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would not have that money. <laughs> if someone gave me a ticket, I would go. Oh yeah. If someone gave me a ticket, that's a different matter. Yeah. yeah. But it needs to be front front row as well because 
I would go to most things people give me a ticket. <laughs> That's not just related to Madonna. <laughs> How we got him here? We gave him a ticket to the studio and he walked in. It was brilliant. <laughs> you know, just find me on the street. It was a raffle ticket. It wasn't even a ticket saying go on to the could. It's like clock room 42 and he came in. Not even a five or a zero. Wouldn't yeah, I'm still dollar. waiting for my prize. Yeah, but... yeah. Listen, well, the Madonna ticket will mm -hmm. get you a full old shebang of a show. I imagine, but there's been a bit of controversy around the current stadium tour where as part of it, there is a kind of a montage, I guess, which is dedicated to people who have died of AIDS. Mm -hmm. And in this, there's been a bit of a blunder because Luther Van Ross has appeared on this. And so there's been some backlash because Luther Van Ross did not have AIDS, does not die of it. Okay. And was never officially, not that this is actually necessarily the same thing but and i guess was never officially out ah. um in life so there's been a bit of a backlash around this and again kind of similar to the coin situation my thought immediately was like again how many people not passing through but how many people have how had to look over this <laughs> how many people did luther van Gogh go through <laughs> How many people have uh, said yes we're absolutely fine with this visual whatever and there's no problems here it's got to the point where, you know, it's in a show and then I guess somebody's been like, hold on a minute. Although I have to say, if I was part of the team, I don't know if I'd be like, <laughs> want to knock on Madonna's door and be like, sorry, just <laughs> Stop. just to let you know I th you've got this a little bit wrong. Um, so it, it's in the, from what I've seen, there's, there's a big um, tableaus that come from the ceiling behind Madonna. She wouldn't know. Just don't put the picture in. Yeah. Don't tell her. I mean, yeah, how much is... She actually involved in any of that. How much like, is she conscious right now? Nobody knows. <laughs> She's an animatronic robot in a Madonna skin suit. She doesn't care. This is live now, actually. It's on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone <laughs> just needs no. some new batteries. <laughs> you see the Energizer Bunny? Madonna. Uh, hey, well, Madonna. Mm -hmm. That's all we have for you on the show business. Okie dokes. Well, it's always interesting to know that um, well, basically Madonna's dead um we'll stick around because <laughs> coming up next we have been on our game of the week you're watching shoe in the cud now we spent some time cramming last week but as we aren't quite done we're going to quiz each other on our lgbtqia factoids as we play gay or nay so then it's off for you to pop off again off I pop. Off you pop. Okay, pop, pop I go. Always oh, again. <laughs> Game of the week. So, same game as last week. Okay, we've got questions. We're going to quiz each other to make sure we've got our LGBTQIA plus history down, as it were. Are you ready, young man? I am ready. <laughs> He's all man. We made sure of that. Isn't my dating profile. It was said um, for a US presidency candidate when it asked their son was gay. Which president was that? Hmm. He wasn't um, orange. <laughs> he wasn't orange. He wasn't you. orange. Um, Clinton. No, Clinton has a daughter. Hmm. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was uh, Ronald Reagan. Lovely. Friend of Thatcher, Ronald Reagan. Hmm. Yes, actor Ronald Reagan. Hmm. Um, basically was saying about whether his son was gay or not. I'm sure it turned out his son was. Well, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah, yeah. but it, it helps to be all man and gay. I did the test, just saying. <laughs> Testies. Testies. That's where it comes from, it to say. <clears throat> ready for me? I am ready for you. Great. Um, I feel like I'm just not doing very well with this knowledge. These are quite, you know, there's some Challenges in here. I don't well, definitely some challenges, yeah. Uh, but this one's about the Kinsey scale. I'd say arguably everybody's favourite type of scale. Um, <laughs> and on that scale, what number represents someone who only has romantic feelings for the same sex? So looking for a number on that scale. Romantic feelings. Romantic feelings, yes. As in, you want to take them out for dinner or you want to eat them out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Depends how romantic you are on your dates. It's a strong word for what I do. Um, so you're after a number? I'm after a number, yes, please. 17. <laughs> okay. 
Um, no, I mean, I actually don't know the numbers that we're going from on the scale. I did not research properly before this, but we're looking for the number six. Um, oh. So, you know, that is not the number that you said, so you are wrong. Like the musical six. That's right, like the musical six. That's but where it's from. On a scale. Um, I can tell you a little bit more if you're interested. Yeah. Absolute heterosexuality is zero. An absolute homosexuality is six, so you know this is the top of the scale. Well, six, six is the top. Yeah, that's right. Six, six, six. is the top. Um, How do you feel about that? Um, definitely not six. So um, that's that's a really short scale. It is a short scale. Absolute heterosexuality is zero. There's not much wriggle wriggle room. The bisexuality is about a what? A three, a two? Yeah. Or is it? Do you just go in zero, zero point zero one? You no longer 100 percent straight, so. Uh, zero to sixty in three point five. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's there. All right, Rihanna. <laughs> um, right. So if you want me to shut up, dear. Right. Okay. Um, moving on. In nineteen nineteen, in fifteen thirty three, King Henry the Eighth created the Buggery Act, which was not. A, oh, it was a penalty. Okay. Which was a crime in England. I thought it was an act of buggery. I was like, going, well done, you, King Henry the Eighth. Thank you very much, love. <laughs> um, they've been doing it before. Um, what was the penalty for said act? For buggery. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just, right. like, just say buggery again. Buggery. Don't know what it is. Buggery in a Scottish accent sounds like a lovely word. Buggery. Buggery. Have you ever buggered? No. <laughs> Have I been? Personal question, the answer is yes. Oh. Right. What, <laughs> what was the penalty? What's the question? <laughs> what are we doing? Who am I? What are we doing? Bugger. Penalty for, for taking it up the wrong one. From King of the Eight. Right. Um, to become uh, one of his uh, uh, sex slaves. <laughs> I love the way you read that. Sex slaves. <laughs> Just checking. That's it was like, like watching the news, but <laughs> slightly wrong. <clears throat> sex, sex slaves. <laughs> um, no. Death was the answer. Wow. Whether you were topping or bottoming. Uh, so, I, uh, what, either? Yeah, so everybody verse was screwed, really. Hey. Mm. Um, Gosh. But, yeah, but it's better because in, um, in Rome, on the Vatican State even, they used to use something called the Pope's Pear, mm. which was basically a butt plug mm -hmm. that they used to pop inside you and then turn it and it'd expand and rip you asunder. Gosh, wow. But, yeah. That's, so it's, it's basically <laughs> extreme fisting. Yeah, it's like a Saturday. Well, once a month, maybe. Mm. No, no one needs that much fibre in the diet. Um, have you got one for me now? <sighs> right, I do. Um, now, I'm looking for another number here. I know you like those. 69. <laughs> Correct. Great. Hey. There you go. <laughs> um, but there may well have been some 69s in this situation. How many men were in the elite homosexual group of soldiers, I know you're getting excited, formed by Gorgadas in 378 BCE. Oh, they'll all be dead now. I was packing my bags, I was booking holiday. Mm. Like, where's Gorgadas? I'm going. Well, exactly, where is that? I'm not sure. Mm. How many? How many men? Elite homosexual group. How many men in a group? Buggery. <laughs> Buggery. Um, it, do, it sounds like a food substance, I'm sorry. Uh, I did, it's like, with buggery. Uh, right. um, it's in th th Thebes. Thebes? Thebes? As in Gypsies Champson. Gypsies Champson. Possibly the Roman Empire somewhere. Um, says a voice in my ear. <laughs> so I'm thinking, what's a sensible number mm. of, of horny men um, all together? And then yes. doubling it. <laughs> so, 819. <laughs> okay. Specific. I feel like you've thought about this number before. For but how did purposes. I double it and get an odd number? Mm. There's the question. Unfortunately, not that many, oh. but also still sizable. Oh. You know, might entertain you for a weekend, perhaps. Uh, 300. One night. You said a weekend. Mm. Just a weekend. Not a weekend. Yeah. Work, work on the slightly on Sunday, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> moving on. When was the, do you know when the first gay and lesbian march was in Washington? 
Uh, what do you mean, Washington State? Washington, D.C.? Uh, Washington, D.C. Um, I'm going to say... So... Mm, mm, 1978. Oh my god. What? 1978. What? Yeah. It's wrong, it's 1965. Uh, uh, I actually legitimately got excited there and thought... I wondered why I was moving forward with my life and things hadn't been erased <laughs> and that, you know, existence had meaning. There we go. So, your next question is... Dr. Tom Waddle, a member of the 1968 Olympic team, started the Gay Games, which is an international sporting event held every four years. Originally, it was to be called the Gay Olympics, but the name was changed for which reason? The Olympic Committee didn't like reminding people that the Olympics were originally all men running around naked. Hmm, I mean, that is quite a plausible answer. Um, but not the dull like, one. Copyright infringement now. <laughs> <laughs> Although, not that far off, really. The answer, mm -hmm. unless you'd like to take any other guesses. Um, they, were, they were scared that the javelin throwers would be excited, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're still thinking about those 300 soldiers. I am. Um, so the United States Olympic Committee requested a federal injunction against using the name Olympic for this group. So they were just being a bit prissy and rubbish about using the name, I think. One wonders why the USOC never brought up the use of the term. <laughs> one wonders, I wonder, or whoever wrote this wonders. One wonder. <laughs> one does one wonder. wonder. <laughs> um, why, uh, one does wonder, actually, why they've not stopped the use of Olympics when it comes to, for example, Dog Olympics, Police Olympics, Nude Olympics. First of all, I did not know there was a Nude Olympics, did you know? Am I sat here or am I watching the Nude Olympics? <laughs> Have you been in it? No, 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 no. I, I, no one wants to see this nude. Even Do me, dog I, Olympics I, I, is another option as well. I, I was going to say, I, I blindfolded myself coming out of the shower just in case. Well, those Olympics exist. It may be it's for another year. Yes. Four years training. Um, mm. Stick around, because coming up next, um, we're going to get taught some things in Teach Me a Lesson. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to learn exactly how we produce a song worthy of Eurovision as we talk to Ven in Teach Me a Lesson. So, song smithery. Mm. I believe that's a word. That is right. That's is my that last name. Is it actually Smith. song smithery? <laughs> yeah, last name <laughs> is song smithery. Shortened to Smith. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a smith. A smith of songs. Ah, yes, lovely. Um, so, quite recently, you have been involved with Eurovision. That is right. Yeah, it was very exciting. So talk, talk to me, what, what happened? How did you get involved? Oh, well, it all began. Um, so there, well, Eurovision has always been something that I've watched since I was a kid. So, and I kind of love it, love to hate it, but also love to love it secretly. I just love it. <laughs> Not even that much of a secret. But the small country of San Marino, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a landlocked country in in Italy, because they're so small, they open up the applications for any musicians across the world to take part in their own competition to then represent the country in Eurovision. So I entered this and then I kind of didn't think much more about it and then but got through to the, the first round, which is very exciting. So I had to do an online edition back at the start of this year mm -hmm. um, of my own tunes. And then just before I was moving to Manchester, then I got word that I was through to the semi-finals, so I had to go to their live TV show in San Marino. Well, it wasn't live then, but it was recorded, and then the final was live. Um, so yeah, then within a week I had to get a whole new song together, get an outfit together, of which this is actually part of. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, fly to, to Italy, then get myself to San Marino, and take part in the competition. So it was, well, yeah, well, uh, an amazing experience, kind of like absolutely bonkers, as you might expect anything Eurovision adjacent to be, but, but uh, yeah, like a really, really amazing thing to be part of. Cool. So you said you apply. How did you apply? How did you find out how to apply? So I'd originally heard about it through another artist in London. I was living in London at the time and he had been in it. 
So he's called Aaron Sibley. And um, so I, it was on my radar that this is something that you could maybe do. And then they just open, at some point, they open up like an application form and literally anybody can, can reply to it. You obviously have to submit your songs and then it goes through uh, a panel. Um, so yeah, I was just like, well, you know, why not? That could be kind of fun. And then so in the, so when I got through to the semifinals, I was, by that point, I was the only UK representative still in the competition, which is quite cool. Oh. Uh, and I went, so I very much went UK, but also I was going with this being Scottish thing as well. So the had the kilt on. Mm -hmm. I managed to like I, I got quite a lot of Scottish press <laughs> for for being in the competition as well, which was kind of lovely, which I hadn't expected at all. So um, it's like one of these things. I think people maybe like make fun of your vision, but actually, if there's like maybe an element of somebody I don't know somehow getting through that might represent you, mm -hmm. then everyone's kind of like, oh, that's amazing, that's fun. So yeah, so I went through. I got uh, got a new song together for it, um, and then did the competition. Unfortunately, didn't make it to the finals. But hey, I was actually, I surprised myself about how gutted <laughs> I was. I was there, I was like, you know what, actually, I really would love this. Um, but it's fine, it's kind of spurred me on. I'm now like, in the back of my mind, maybe there's still a way for me to get into Eurovision somehow, even if it's like being a songwriter or working with some other people. So my next Eurovision plan is that I work with some artists in different countries. So a lot of them have their own competitions to find the representative for the uh -huh. country before the final thing. Not like the UK who just pays some money and gets in, you know. Um, a lot of them work <laughs> work their way into that Eurovision place. So I'm gonna try and collaborate with some other artists in different countries. Cool, so you, you said you put the song together mm. specifically for Eurovision. Um, how did you come up with the idea for that? How did you come up with that, that song idea so quickly? I had some songs that were kind of like in my demo folder that we were just never recorded and hadn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it was going to be one of those. So I did already have like an idea of a song kind of sitting there. And then I have a producer that I worked with and I was like, hey, so we have a week. <laughs> um, can we produce this song and make it like a Eurovision worthy thing? And so there's quite, there's like some specifications as well, as well for a Eurovision song. I, it's probably the same for most countries, but for San Marino, so three minutes is the maximum. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, you know, pop in the the sort of quick quick pop world um and three minutes being maximum so you really got to get in there with your idea and your hooks and your chorus it's got to be pretty much like wham bam this is the song you know no messing around <laughs> wham bam i just boom bang a bang went in my head though. yeah well exactly so that's that's very your vision <laughs> very old your vision but yeah, um, okay, cool. So you already had this idea of a song that you wanted to put together. You worked with the producer. You went over there and, and performed it. And when you when you perform in front of a, a staged audience or a live audience, what's that like? Mm. Well, I think the for Eurovision as well, like it's it isn't just music. <laughs> <laughs> Some would argue sometimes it's not music, <laughs> but like a big part of the thing is, I guess, a TV program essentially as well. So like the the visual and the staging is as much a part of a Eurovision song and performance as anything else. I think the magic comes when you, you know, you get a legitimately good song that meets with like some pretty cool staging and well thought out mm -hmm. stuff, even if it's absolutely bonkers. But like when it kind of comes together, um, that's when you can kind of get some magical Eurovision moments sometimes it, it doesn't <laughs> in either way but you know often I mean you'll often think if you think about Eurovision for me anyway you sometimes probably think more about the visual and the staging than actually the songs themselves so I guess that was uh, that was my initial thought is like okay this is a song but how am I going to like <laughs> present myself and do it so so yeah so the outfit was part of it so the the kilt was something that I perform in anyway so I was like okay I need to go with this, I need to kind of get some other bits and bobs, go with a colour theme, so purple being my, my theme. And th so the song that I wrote is called Jumper. So I was like, I need to have a jumper. <laughs> so the idea is kind of like a queer love song, essentially. And the idea is in the chorus, it's like, it's kind of like a sweet sentiment, but I, so I want to wear your jumper is that okay. idea. It's like, um, I wrote it after watching Heartstopper. Did you ever watch? Uh -huh. So I, I, binge watched like the second series of that after coming back from music festival i was already quite tired and emotional <laughs> anyway okay then watched that and i was like oh finished you off. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and then wrote this song and it was kind of like you know imagine if i was a teenager now like being able to actually have like 
a boyfriend when I was a teenager and kind of learning a lot of those hard lessons about love at that time. So it's kind of it came from that angle of like sort of almost like I wish I'd been able to do all those things that you might have done when you're a teenager exploring love, but I couldn't necessarily do when I was in that age. But obviously, a passion for Eurovision. I mean, obviously from the jumper as well with the hearts of the Eurovision. Um, so much so that the, the gallery have even made sure that we've got the Eurovision logo flying up in the back of the show here. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. It's, it's, uh, it's a choice. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hearts are, you know, hearts are the things. Isn't hearts it? are a big thing, for, especially for Eurovision. Um, and you said that, you know, in the future you'd like to, to work with collaborations and stuff with other people. Um, what do you think of this year's UK entry? So I actually was just listening and watching the video where I came to see you. Uh, so I I think it's, it's pretty good. I think as in terms of the history of UK entries go, <laughs> um, I think it's a pretty good song. And it's like, it, legitimately, aside from your vision, I think it's pretty good pop. <laughs> pop song, synthy pop, it's all the kind of things that I kind of love in pop music anyway. Um, and I think Ollie Alexander is like a very uh, great performer, likable performer. So I think it has potential to do well. Mm. Don't think it's a winner, um, but I think it'll do pretty well. Like the music video and stuff as well is quite cool. I quite like. It. So it'll be interesting to see what the actual staging is mm. of the show in itself. I think in some ways though, like that almost is maybe a bit of a hurdle that when you get straight, you have to go straight into the final. You don't get the chance to kind of test things out in like the semi-finals and all of this. Well, kind of learn and grow. So you kind of just have to come in. Um, but yeah, I like it. How, what do you feel about it? It's an okay song. It's it's very much it's Ali Alexander, and I love Ali Alexander for all their political messages as well as their music. Yeah. Um, it's just very much a. Mm. Is it a standout? I don't think. I, I yeah. don't think we're going to win. Yeah. Oh no, I I, right. I wouldn't. I think this is de it's definitely not Katrina. It's not a Gina G. No. It's not up to that level. Um, and we keep irritating the rest of Europe, so that's why we're never actually going to win. Um, but maybe they'll let UK, Ukraine, Ukraine win again. I mean, quite possibly. It'll be and interesting then, to see what happens yeah, this year. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so um, that Eurovision hit that you've made, yeah, what's going to happen with it? Thank you for calling it a hit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that? You're going to put it in the bin? Never touch the right day again? No, it's going to come out. Um, so I'm going to release it in April. Okay. So I, because it all happened so quickly, all I had together is basically the backing track so I need to now finish like the main vocals and I play saxophone as well so I've got that on on there so I'm gonna get all that tidied up and then we'll release it in in April um as a fun little thing that happened because of Eurovision so okay cool and um, what's the song called the song is called Jumper you know okay that's what you gotta watch out for and where will it be available it'll be available on all your usual streaming services Spotify Apple etc wherever okay. you listen to your music Wonderful, perfect. And if we wanted to reach out and, and grab you on the social medias, how could we do that? Sure, please do reach out and grab me. <laughs> That's the only fans link for. <laughs> you can grab me at Ven Smith on all the socials and on Spotify, etc. So it's V E W -N, N, like a Venn diagram. That's what I like to describe it as. And then Smith with a Y. Perfect. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. So that is almost the end of the show. Just remember to join us on our social media here at The Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>